and then I and then I and then I said, okay, well, uh, they go in order of us for you to do this job that what was going to give me like what eighty bucks or something like that. I had to go take a drug test and pay it for myself and have it be taken out of my paycheck of all things, and uh, and I was like, well. You know, I, I if I did it now, I'm not going to pass. You know, I said, but if I decide to take one uh, later and uh, and and I want to pass, uh, you know, you know, and work, and they said, yeah, I could do that. Well, I don't understand is why they drug tested you. Okay, so check this out, right? Right. The reason that they hire from a third party, and then the reason a third party company goes out and hires third party others, so technically you're going, you're a fourth party at that point. Right. Because they're claiming you're an independent contractor. Which means you don't actually work for them, you work for yourself. Right. Somebody also hires them, they hire you as an independent contractor, and then Costco's saying, we want the drug test. Yeah. What's really weird about that is the whole reason you do that is so Costco doesn't have any liability. But Costco's insurance wouldn't cover you anyways. You're an independent contractor. They didn't hire you. They hired this other company who then hired another company to go fill in for them. Yes. Point, you're considered as an independent contractor your own company. Yes, I know. That's what that's what I thought too. Right. So the whole reason that that, that so that being all set up like that, right? Uh -huh. All done purposely so Costco has no, uh, you know what I'm saying? They have no, they no tie to you. You know what I'm saying? Like if you did something, if you got in trouble, if you sold crap, you know, or you were high and there something happened, they have no responsibility. It falls on either you or the, that other company, not Costco. So I find it weird that Costco would ask for the drug test when it actually had nothing to do with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I thought the whole thing was kind of strange, and it, it it was really annoying to me. And of course, you know, when I failed my test, I got the lady who hired me um, got really kind of nasty to me and demeaning, and made it sound like I was, you know, some sort of you know pothead stoner that wasn't going to finish my commitment to the other company that I was working for. That I always finished my commitment. Like I already had like a really great work record with these other people. I never had. I never did not. I never got in trouble. I never. I never ex not executed my stuff I mean um, I was like the top the second top seller uh, of the whole bamboo sheet week and I was the replacement and yet I got this like total treatment so you know I, I wrote a pretty scathing uh, paragraph basically making a, a point that uh, you know that I thought it was a winch hunt in a suffering economy and that Costco had more pharmaceuticals going at their pharmacy killing people for over you know you could OD on than medical marijuana so I, I did I did let the know how I felt because you know I figured at that point what who cares I'm gonna I'm probably gonna get fired I mean they're probably not gonna hire me anymore any way so I might as well you know leave you know defending my point so on that note we do need to take a commercial we'll be right back and we'll be introducing our guests Kimberly Matlock and uh, the Lizard Prince uh, stay tuned Okay, sorry guys, we kind of like went into the whole the whole time, but I'm gonna introduce you guys now after the break. So um, here's uh, uh, Jim Morrison, uh, <laughs> James. Uh, now I'm gonna have you. You're hopefully gonna stay with us for the whole uh, two hours. Uh, and Kimberly is uh, most likely um, going to um, be done by 12:55. So I want to, um, Kimberly is a, um, uh, an MS patient and, uh, I want to get like most of her stuff, like, uh, her, you know, like how she treats herself, you know, and, and, uh, in, in, in everything and then get to, um, you know, where I'll focus more on you, like a little bit after we get her story going. Is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So Kevin had me eat some hash the other day. Uh-huh. And, you know, I don't know about the medical properties. It knocks my ass out. Oh. That shit put me out, like, fucking straight up on the couch, fucking cross-eyed. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've been no, it was good. Don't get me wrong, but it, it hit me like a fucking ton of bricks, man. Yeah, the first time I did it, I felt drunk. Like I, I said, I was like, I felt drunker than Tick Indians. Like, oh, was, yeah. The first Good time Lord. I did it, I felt hammered. After that, it doesn't, it doesn't do that anymore. Uh, it's only that one time. Like, I'm chasing the dragon with it. <laughs> well, I mean, would it be better to do, like, a little bit less? I mean, do you think, I mean, how much did you do, Northflat? Oh, it was maybe the size. 
twice my uh, maybe the size of my pinky um, pinky nail around. Wow. It was small, but uh, you know about the size that you know a, a nice large bowl. Yeah, I, I had a situation kind of like that when I was coming back from Australia. We put twenty grams of keef inside of one batch of muffins of six muffins <laughs> and we decided we, it would be a smart idea to eat those before we got on the plane <laughs> we completely forgot about how long it takes to get through those lines and well that just didn't end that well <laughs> they let you off the plane oh me and it was me and my brother we were fine we just felt pretty funny we got onto the plane, and since the drinking age there is 18, we got the bright idea to drink along with it, and that, that just made it a lot worse. <laughs> All of a sudden, we pass out at 21 hours till arrival, and we wake up at one hour until arrival. Nice. Right yeah. on. So, so we slept for 20 time. hours. <laughs> Where were you heading from again? Uh, we were heading from Melbourne, Australia, oh. to, L- uh, to L.A., and then from L.A. to... Um, Washington, D.C. Holy shit. Yeah, long trip. Wow. I don't even... I mean, it's a... Let's just go to the hood. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, we just came from Melbourne, Australia. Let's go to the ghettoest place we can find in America. Where's that? Oh, yeah, Washington, D.C. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm even a more ghetto place than that at the moment, so... Right? No, I'm down for ghetto. I... I uh, I travel quite a bit. I haven't made it to Australia. It's one of the places on my bucket list. But when I when I do travel, I like to go to where the locals and the people are, not where the, the tourist metastasis try to take me. <laughs> uh, word of advice: go to Bri- um, go to Brisbane and Hamilton Island. Those are the two best places. I was telling uh, uh, J- James that. Uh, that you know, I, I we were saying like how corrupt America's coming, going that he's gonna go back to Australia, and I'm like, take me with you. <laughs> I'm fine with that. It doesn't bother me at the least. <laughs> Welcome back to Hollywood Hemptress Hour on Time for Hemp uh, and on iHeartRadio. With me uh, in studio, in our virtual studio, uh, I have North Flat Foreskin (laughs) Foreskin, (laughs) and Kevin Korn from Hardcore Entertainment. Both of you guys are with Hardcore Entertainment and Trips, which we have a forum on Facebook. And also with me is uh, my good friend, uh, the Lizard Prince. No, uh, James Douglas uh, Morrison II is uh, is with us uh, today, uh, and uh, he's a, a, a young marijuana activist smoker. Uh, originally, I met him when he was still living in Australia. Well, we didn't really meet, but we met on 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 the internet. And uh, also uh, with me is Kimberly Matlock, who is a uh, MS patient who uses uh, medical marijuana as her treatment. Uh, Welcome to the show, Kimberly and uh, the Lizard Prince. How are you guys? What, Kimberly? We're surviving here. We have 70 mile wind. (gasps) I'm on a farm here in Northern California. Oh my God. We got horses in the back that we have to, you know, make sure everything's uh, pretty much in tight, you know. Um, we had rain yesterday and winds tonight. Wow. And, uh, well. And I know you guys are in Southern California, and I heard we had a little rain yesterday. <laughs> Actually, we got a little funny. Interference there. Skype does the strangest things sometimes. Uh, actually, you know, I'm not in California. I'm 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 in Washington now. Uh, so um, and believe that's so odd that it's raining down in California. It did not rain up here, um, but uh, it it is awfully cold tonight. So I'm just gonna put that out there. But uh, I I relocated to to the northwest. Um, 
actually. Um, but I'm glad that you're here, even though, uh, you know, your weather is not that great there. And, uh, you know, I had you on my show before when I was broadcasting on New Dissident Radio. And the reason why um, I wanted to bring you back again, first of all, because you gave a great interview the last time, but your story is so interesting. Um, I love the fact that you don't take any of um, the pharmaceuticals that are uh, provided for you out there by Western medicine and that you have your own organic uh, treatment uh, including uh, which includes cannabis can you um, let our listeners know how and how what your procedure is and how and why you got started well I've been a vegetarian for 32 years and when I discovered I had MS in 2003 I figured I'm going to take my own path and um all my action stems from the garden, um, strictly cannabis, herbs, and vitamins, along with the vegetarian diet. But um, I utilize the whole plant. And not only do I utilize the whole plant, I'm now incorporating with diets with the animals, with the horses, like from colic and um, just different areas to see if horses don't have gallbladders. And right now, we're getting excellent uh, results with it, just like with the MS. To see, MS patients, there's variations in MS, and I want to go through this ride without like losing my vision and you know other disorders that do kick in. And so far, everything's been you know uh, pretty sound on my behalf. Um, I still um, exercise, you know, um, three to four times a week. Um, I'm continuing um, with, the, with the can of diet, and that means I extract, like I said, from I utilize the whole plant and then use the, uh, the butter for, you know, cooking, baking. I don't fry anything, or things like baking or raw. Um, and the results have been, like I said, they've been, they've been great. I don't feel any numbness in my hands or, or my feet or anything like that. Uh, 2020 vision, and and perfectly. I mean, in physical tone, I'm in I'm in excellent shape. Probably about seven to eight percent body fat. That's amazing. So I'm eliminating because there are no toxins in cannabis. I mean, people think, oh, it's a it's a gateway to other drugs. That's not true. I've never explored any other area. I, I use this as an isolated area for my diet, and, you know, from the teas, um, I, I make yerba mate, and I throw the dried leaves and the stems in there. Um, like, we have, our farm is surrounded with mulberry trees, with the mulberry, uh, we have fruitless and the ones with the fruit, and I don't know if you guys are aware of mulberries are like the cousin in the cannabis family. And it's such a nutritious fruit. So, with the combination with the cannabis, uh, fruit, veggies, different herbs, you know, from, like I said, from the extracts, we are now working. Um, I don't know if you heard about this. There's a, a gentleman up here that has this little baby, you know, like a two year old on cannabis, because he's having seizures. So he's, uh, you know, he's going out, you know, in that area to protect his little son. I didn't know that. I, you know, I, I'd love to have, and if you, do you know him personally? No, I don't, but I see him on the news all the time. He's, I think, outside of Stockton, uh -huh. by the bear. Utah just passed a law last week allowing them and to. And he, he uh, had some legal uh, issues at first, but medical marijuana. He's to, gone. I'm sorry, um, Kevin just said something for a minute. You just said that Utah passed a law to allow... Utah, of all places, last week passed a law allowing them to legally prescribe marijuana to infants and small children with epilepsy. Oh, that's very interesting. So, I mean, there's a lot of children that are using medical marijuana right now for epilepsy for seizures. Is that what she's talking about? Wow. Yeah, they eat it. Yeah, they I had it for. What are you going to say, Kimberly? 
I, I had a dog two years ago that passed on. Uh-huh. And a friend of ours was a state vet, and he was out of town. And we had, she would have seizures all the time. And there was a three-day run that Dr. Cook was in the back of town, so we ran the cannabis butter and through the dog. You know, we, we added what the dog did. Didn't have one seizure within the three days. So when he came back, you know, he noted it and everything, but, I mean, it, it was pretty scary with her, you know. But the, I know it does work on the seizures. Uh-huh. That's interesting that you gave your dog um, cannabis. I've, I've heard some, you know, co uh, co controversial things about that, and yet, um, you know, I, I, I've I've known friends to to who do to, who've done that with their pets. Um, but it's funny when you put it out there, let's say on Facebook or something like that. A lot of people are very skeptical skeptical about and very fearful about uh, cannabis use on an on an animal. But all my dogs, all my dogs have smoked pot, and they've all lived, they've all lived long, long, happy lives. Hell, my Springer lived until he was 19 years old, smoked pot every day for fucking 13 years. My cat, my cat likes pot, so um, you know, I think he's 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 pretty happy too. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, a friend. That's legal. What? Uh, I mean, if you eat the outside of potato, you could die. You know, there's toxicity in different parts. She probably had a really good time. God, I think what you just described happened to be in Eureka, California once. <laughs> <laughs> what, you ate some, you ate a half ounce, fell asleep, got up, ate some food, hum, like sniffed somebody's socks and humped their leg? <laughs> no, you know, in a bar was sniffing my socks and started humping my leg once in this little bar in, in Eureka. Uh-huh. This sound is very familiar. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, so uh, so Kimberly, uh, you you've been you doing this in your diet um, for for now. You just say like over twenty two years, or you're a vegetarian for over twenty two years. Thirty two years. Thirty two years. So how long? How when, And it was were you diagnosed with um, MS thirty two years ago? No, two thousand three. Okay, so. Um, I mean, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. And then at that point, did you just, like, what did you, what happened? Like, what made you turn to cannabis instead of uh, Western medicine? Well, I'm a certified herbalist, so I knew, I knew exactly what path I was going to go down. I've had a couple friends with MS, and they're on the pharmaceuticals, injected their legs and everything, and I'm like, I do not want to be a paraplegic. I do not want to be like that. So I just, uh, on my own diet and just went down this road. And like I said, I've been very successful with it. I'm, um, like I said, I, with the exercise and the diet and in this path, I, you know, I, I don't know what you guys think about the Obamacare, but I think it's a joke, you know? Uh-huh. Well, yeah, we've got some strong thoughts on that. I 
insurance for years. I'm not big on doctors. Do it yourself. Agreed. Look after yourself. Condition yourself. It was it was it was the small to, to destroy you. our health care. The, the Obama, Obamacare was designed to destroy our current health care system. That's exactly what it what it was and what it's done and what it's doing. Not that, to that's my that, opinion. Not, not to mention it was a huge data collection. They mined so much data. Oh, my Lord. Which I believe is the new currency is data. So they basically, you know, since there's no money left and our dollars worth crap, they basically... <laughs> Just let me tell you something. You guys are talking about welfare earlier? Yeah. Welfare? Okay. Yeah. My husband works three jobs. We've never, ever tapped into the state for, for a country or anything, for anything like that, right? But our country is so busy sending our funds that we pay a lot in taxes to other countries. And other countries, what do they do? They buy us on the rear end, you know? We need to take care of our own. Yes, we do. Yeah. What would happen though if we decided to start our own? And you know, all these places where we get like pretty much all our crap from, and within two days you walk into a Walmart and there's no electronic session, there's no clothes, there's no nothing. People would flip out. But you know, I, I don't understand. Like people, I don't think people understand that the reason there are no jobs is because we don't produce anything in America anymore. Right. Oh. I mean, lot of, I mean, look at everything you own. It was made somewhere else other than America. And if it was made in America, technically it wasn't made in America. It was assembled here. All the parts, all the pieces, all the materials, all the raw stuff that came from, came from somewhere else. Hey, we make China's uh, chopsticks. Yeah. But you know what the funny thing about that is? Is they send us the wood to make yeah. their chopsticks with. Exactly. Kimberly, did you have a thought there for a minute? I saw your little box, I mean, your little uh, Skype beep. I'm sorry, Terry, what did you say? Uh, did you have a thought? Did you have something that you wanted to say there? Are you talking about China? I don't know. I mean, I, th I thought you wanted, I, th I thought for a minute you wanted to, 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 to join in the conversation. I was, I, I, I might have, I might have been, might have been wrong for a second. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. Um, but I don't know if you guys ever went to a dollar store. Yes. You walk out 99% like a 99 cent store, 99% yeah. of the product that you walk out, if you flip it around, was made and produced in China. Oh, I'm not oh, that's 95% of the products that we, that we buy. Yeah, what you what you pay. Or what, what you pay. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Target, you can go to Kmart, you can go to Nordstrom, you can go to JCPenney. It's all made in China. What's scary now is it's not regulated like our country. You know, and you'll, you'll flip on the news and they'll say, oh, you know, what you bought at the store, we won't let your child put it in its mouth because of heavy metals and lead. You know, what about that? What about the environment? They talk about cannabis. Give me a break. All the heavy metals in, in a, taking a shower, every 15-minute shower, is equivalent to eight glasses of unpure five water a day. You get a lot of heavy metals there, too. Unless you have a purifier on your shower. I mean, everything that's out there that's legal kills you. Yeah, I just, I know I didn't think about the shower thing. A, this was nothing but a political herb, and that's it. If you go to Genesis in the Bible, it says you, I've given you every herb bearing seed to eat and to heal with. Every herb on earth has some kind of healing power. Everything. Everything does. You just got to find it. And on that, we're going to take right a... On that, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, great job, Kimberly. So I talked to Doug today. Has he? Uh, do you have cable? Do you have a cable bill? Have you? Have you? You know how he says Doug saves you money dot com. Yeah, we got a bundle package, and um, I don't. I don't think he could get us down. We're we're pretty good. We're good there. Yeah, he he's and been. He's, he's good. I told him just keep just keep on it. 
Yeah, he's. He's going to have to start modifying loans on mortgages. Yeah. I'm going to have a big line. Yeah, he's pretty. I mean, I he's he's the best. He's the best of getting in getting deals. Um, you know, if you need to do a rental or anything, he's he can really he can really get he can really get the the, the best price. Over there in Dana Point. Yeah, I stayed at, over there for a couple of days with him one time. I've never even been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. My mom gave it to me. My mom gave it to me, and Doug's like a brother to me, so I gave Doug half of it. You know, he's right there. Um, but, you know, he can enjoy it. But, you know, we could trade it out for anything. We trade it out for Australia, New Zealand. I used to race horses, and I used to bring horses from over there. My trainer, and they have to go through Coggins and that. It's kind of interesting, you know. It's not like just racing in Hawaii or something, you know. That um, yeah, it does we talked about it? We like to like trade it out to I think maybe Hawaii. Go to Hawaii. Uh, a little 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 island, not not the big one, the smaller one. Yeah, well, if you do, don't do Oahu either. Uh, if you do, the, the best one is Kauai. So if you do, any of them do Kauai. But I wouldn't recommend it, you know, unless you keep interchanging it out. I mean, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. Kauai is the place that you go, and if you go, you don't stay more than, like, a couple of days. So if you have a time sheet that's got time on it, you know, unless you're only going to use it maybe one week, yeah. then, then I would go there, but... Kauai is not a fun place. I, I, you know, I left there at a pretty young age, but I go back quite a bit. And, you know, most of the Hawaiians I know, they all would live here in Oregon now with me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why well, there's a big botanical garden over there? Yeah. It's, uh, um, it's and Kauai is also where they shot the opening scenes. You have the waterfall, and that's where they came in on helicopter and shot the opening scenes for uh, Jurassic Park. Where it's all that green, really? it's like rainforest, not waterfall. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful island. It's a lot of flowers, and the people are really nice. There's not a lot going on. That's that's why I can say that. Oahu is basically the whole island is like a downtown city. It's just pumping, it's constant. You've got like 150,000 people coming and going every single day, and it's just insane. And then Hawaii, the big island, is nice stuff too, but it's pretty much overpopulated at this point as well, and it's just. I mean, it's just not as, it's not what you think it is, you know, from what you see in postcards, or you see on TV, and then you get there, and it's just, it's really bad. <laughs> but I, I, I love mean, it. commercialize, you know, like, Honolulu, I wouldn't be interested in anything like that. Right. Kauai, though, it's like L.A. LA or something, beautiful island. It's Kauai. And then, uh, you know, but I'm trying to get to Australia. That's where I want to go. I've never been to Australia, and that's like, like, that's one of that in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a lot of Kiwis in the business. Right. My family's in the racing industry, you know. They have farms and that, and all this in thoroughbred, and we were in the standard bread. And uh, a lot, we get a lot of what we call Kiwis, uh, New Zealand bread. Right. Right. And over there, they race the opposite. It's like driving on the other side of the street. <laughs> the tracks go the other way, you know, and then you bring them over here, and now they go the other way. But, um, yeah, it, it is, it's, it's beautiful. I, mean, it's, I think I'd have a pet kangaroo or something. Yeah, like, my whole goal is to, like, go see, like, an aborigine come out, like, behind the brush somewhere with a, with a spear. Yeah. And then I want to see one of those smart. little lizards. Where they, the necks flap up. <laughs> the, the aborigines are actually very, very violent. Are they? Oh yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah you don't want to run this is this is like a quote from a police officer where I used to live. If you see a line of aboriginals in the middle of the road, you hit your gas as hard as you can, and you hit as many of them as you can. <laughs> I told you to run them over. Oh, yeah, you know, because you know what they'll do. <laughs> Welcome back to Hollywood Hempress Hour on the Time for Hemp Network. 
Uh, I'm Terry Joyce, your host, and you. we're also connected to iHeartRadio, so thank you for staying tuned. Uh, in the virtual studio, we have North Blatt, Force Grin, Kevin Korn, my co-host, both these guys. Uh, also, we have uh, the Lizard Prince. I'm just going to call you the Lizard Prince, James. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about that in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, and also, uh, we have Kimberly Matlock uh, with us, who is a cannabis patient uh, who basically basically has pretty much maintained her health uh, with using cannabis and organic foods and herbs and vitamins um, after her diagnosis with uh, MS. So, uh, Kimberly, um, you know, we've got, this is like the last uh, little bit of segment here. And again, you're more than welcome to stay for the second hour, but I know that you have like high winds there and and uh, and you maintain a whole farm. Just a little side note, I, 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 I want to... Um, bring up the fact that you used to race horses. Can we can we talk about that just a little bit? Sure. So how many years did you do that? You trained you trained race horses, correct? Right. I, I also um, I would do reflexology and herbology on the horses. We put me like marks on the horses. Uh-huh. We would um, take babies from the farm, get them ready. And everything that in our in our you know the farm in the stable that we would perform would be either you know we would race on oats, hay, and nutrition. Period. I had a massage team that would come in, and uh, it just we just went the whole nature path. You know, we tried to once a horse gets on Lasix or view, it's kind of hard to get off, but I clean up after it. Um, in fact, I have three on my property now. Two are Canadian, one's a cow bread. And it, it's funny because the Canadian thinks the cow bread's the mother, and she's not. They just look the same, and one's younger. They, they come to me like a dog. Like, I'll whistle, and I'll call them, and they'll be clear on the field, and they'll come around the paddock, and they'll come right to me, the second dog. And, you know, and I thought the one had to flip the bucket over and stuff, little tricks and stuff. But uh, we do both. We drive and ride them. Um, horses are very interesting animals. Uh, there's two animals on Earth without a gallbladder. One's a rat, one's a horse, but the size difference. Uh, one is, she's 25 years old. She looks like she's about eight or nine. Beautiful. Uh, they go, I mean, you... You could see them almost in the dark. I mean, this is, they have such a shine to them. Uh, we incorporated the mulberry leaves along with the cannabis runner into the, what they call a wet cob. A wet cob would be molasses, corn. Uh, it's got the, um, you know, all the nutrients. I also add a blue, it's called a blue detox. And the blue detox has, you know, everything from, you know, the blackberry, blueberries, soy. So we're getting into the blues along with the greens. And the canna, that's where the canna comes in, cannabis, would be part of the greens. It would be, you know, mixed with the mulberries, the mulberry, mulberry leaves, which are dry, spearmint leaves, which is another uh, cousin to the cannabis. And then when you, when you mix it all together, and I've never had, I'm not kidding. They, when you whistle and you go, Andy, um, one is called Dr. Who, but we call Blueberry. They run. They run to the spoon. And we've never had them walk away from it. Unbelievable. So you're giving, you're giving the, the horses some can of butter, which is, which is, uh, you know, I mean. Cannoli. Oh, you're giving them the leaves. The leaves, and then we mix the can of butter into the grain. Okay. Gosh, it sounds really good. I, I, I feel like I want to go over there and eat, <laughs> join them and eat their trough. <laughs> like, I know. I like, oh, This sounds really good. I want it. We've never had a vet bill. So what should I, what does that say? Oh, wow. We never had a call, of course, or a vet bill. You know, that's funny you say that. We I have in the year 2000 with these horses. Wow. And we incorporate this in the diet. And the horses, just like I said, 
the windows. I can't believe that the 25 year old horse. And I said, yeah. and it, you know, it, it shows up to your skin, your diet does. You know, these are thousand pound vegetarian animals without a gallbladder that have just an absolutely, uh, like I said, they're just, they, they get along beautifully together. Two are from Canada, one, you know, in California. And they got the little family thing going on the back. It's really cute because they're all three painters. And sometimes they go around the paddocks like it's a, like they're at the track. And my New Zealand bred one, um, Tupo, uh, Poppy, and he wound up going to uh, Utah to live with my friend. But he used to go around the track the opposite way, while the other the other ones would go the other way. But yeah, the eyes look good. You know, you, they're all tat. You know, horses, especially race horses, they're all tattooed under the lip. Pull the lip back. It's nice, nice and red. Nice and it's just everything about them. Just every, just they, they're out there. They're prancing, um, pacing around the paddock. Just, just full of energy. Now, do do they get high, Kimberly? Do you think they get high? I mean, do you notice, an, 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 like, the, do they seem altered? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I think it's more with them, more of a nutritious. Because, like I said, anything, well, what, what the horse, you get 10 times the amount as, as a human because of the body weight. Uh-huh. But they never act goofy. I mean, they go out there and they, they you know, like I said, they, they run around like they're in a little race together. And uh, but, uh, the one, uh, Indy, the black horse, now she's kind of a pig, you know, and she'll try to get go for the other one, so that's why we kind of have to separate. When it comes to the cob, we have to separate them separately. Because she'll eat it all. She'll go after one after the other. It's not just like, hey, they love it. it tastes, I mean, you could, eat, you could eat it. It tastes just like the time I'm done with it, just like blackberry. Granola. Oh, that just sounds so good. It sounds like something really good to eat for breakfast. <laughs> right. Oh, you I didn't smell it too, as like you can, you know, as you mix it in there. Oh, it sounds so. I'm going to be one of the biggest for Thanksgiving, you guys. <laughs> I, have two I have three dogs, right? And two of them yeah. don't like hot at all. And I don't force it on them. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't want to eat it. They don't want to smoke it. They don't want to be near it. They don't. They just don't like it. You know what I'm saying? But my, my other dog, Marley, <laughs> he loves, and he'll eat it, right? He'll eat it, especially if I leave it out, he'll get it. Um, if I'm smoking, he'll come and, like, nudge up to me and, like, jump in my leg. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to smoke he it. He wants to partake. He wants to partake. <laughs> and it sounds stupid, right? But it's true. But my dog loves it. And out of the three of them, yep. he's by far the smartest. Like, we can talk and talk to him, and it seems like he understands what I'm saying, you know? He, like, we have this, like, whole communicate, like, he's, like, on a, the whole other, he watches TV. I've never seen, he sits down and watches TV with me. It's weird. And, like, he gets into it. Like, when weird stuff happening on TV, like, he gets closer to the TV and shit. <laughs> like, he understands, like, normal things. That's and I know awesome. I'm not alone on this, because, North Black, you have a chihuahua that's, like, 110 years old. <laughs> he's 12. Yeah, okay. And, <laughs> and, this thing smokes and he looks like he's he looks like he's two years old. I mean he, he yeah. doesn't he doesn't look twelve. It doesn't look like a twelve year old chihuahua, that's for sure. Well <laughs> That's so good. Lives at yeah, most most twelve year old chihuahuas I've seen have no teeth and you know, they they look like they could fucking be in the contenders for the ugliest dog awards. You know? <laughs> so, uh, Kimberly. When I, I harvest my plants, six plants, once a year. Uh huh. And I have an Africa gray that's got a vocabulary of about 40 different words. And I'm not kidding. It, it screams till I give it the stem. <laughs> and, well, I, it knows what it is. And it'll go, come here, hello. And I said, Elvis, just a minute. And then <laughs> he activates the other bird, Saja. And between the two of them, and then I'll break a stem in both of them, there will 
be absolutely nothing left in one hour. This thing will be completely gone. And this stem looks like something, looks like a little small tree. Because up here, things grow bigger. You should know in Washington, the cats are bigger, the plants are bigger, everything is. Oh, yeah. The tree, the oxygen in the air. You know, it, and this stem, like I said, I took one part of it, clipped the end, and put a roach clip thing on the end and used it as a clip, like a roach clip. That's how, that's how thick this stem was. And this bird, because they have 350 pounds pressure on their beak. Uh-huh. Wow, it just seems like every like all all animals seem to like cannabis. It's just like this miracle plant. And on that, we need to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. So, how are you feeling, Kimberly? Do you want to stay for the second hour or Okay. So, um, you know, do you want to just stay like in? Um, I mean, like, like, to, like, just maybe like after the commercial, we'll just say goodbye to you, and and then and then um, you kind of like a little have a little sound off. Sure. Okay. And uh, so that that ought to be here. I, I think I think how long is our break, Sasha? I don't know where he went. <laughs> I didn't know you were in Washington now. Yeah, I moved to Washington. I was in um I, I first I was in Estacada, Oregon. Uh then I um then my roommate actually um ended up dying. Um I was I, renting a, a a mobile home um next door to a friend of mine who was just on the show last night actually. And then I moved to Portland, Southeast Portland for um about seven, eight months, and now I'm up in, um, at Quiet Acres in uh, Vancouver, Washington. I love it here. Um, I've got a creek right out my door. Um, we've got a garden, so I can actually, this next uh, spring, you know, like start to plant um, trees. Uh, it's just, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. I'm really happy. Well, that's great. Yeah. I, I, used, I used to go to Vancouver, over the border, Canada. Uh-huh. And we raced on the island, Victoria Island, and it's beautiful up there. Yeah, I mean it's 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 nice. I mean I, I've I've always liked the Northwest, and I wanted to spend some time up here. Um, you know, my my goal is to get um, you know a hub here going, and then be able to be down in L.A. like say three months at a time or something like that, and you know still have um, a connection uh, down there. But I haven't really been back for. You know, like about a, uh, it's it's been about a year and a half now that I've been that I've been away. But I'm 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 I miss it sometimes. Uh, I get homesick a little bit, but not enough to go home. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Plus, I've I've had like a lot of different um, you know uh, projects up here and uh, stuff. So I don't really want to uh, you know I want to keep um, ha you know keep helping those flourish too as well. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, with 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 the internet going on, I've, I've I've really crossed over into doing a lot of internet media. I've got two different UStream channels. I've been like making videos and editing them, and um, you know, doing radio shows, a lot of different internet radio shows and stuff like that. So, you know, my goal is to I now I want to travel the world and do stand up too as well. So, um, you know, all I, all I need to do is bring my computer with me, and I could get done with the show and go back to my hotel room and broadcast the radio show. <laughs> you know, so. I, I've been wanting to kind of be a little bit more explore. I want to explore things now, have different experiences. Um, LA got a little too 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 many billboards, too much concrete, not enough trees. So, exactly. you know, there you go. I agree. Concrete jungle there. Yeah, you know, it's it's got its own trip. It's got a it's got a vibe that I was just starting to feel out of sync with, and uh, you know, just kind of felt that I wanted to just shift my energy. Um, and not and not not experience it so much so i know it sounds probably weird and very hippie but it's pretty much the truth <laughs> it, it does tell you i'm working on a children's book no yes i'm working i'm working on two i'm working on a 
uh, a fiction one about uh, actually living in the rainforest, a little animal. It's kind of cute. And then the other one, I'm doing the nutrition part with Dr. Zucchio. He's a vet. He's actually a state vet now, and he's handling the, the veterinary part. I'm handling the nutrition, and a friend of mine that works for PetSmart, she's, she's a rep there. She's handling, like, the loving, caring part. So, uh, you know, the three of us are working on this whole project and kind of educating children how to handle animals and take care of them and stuff like that. Wow, that sounds wonderful. Okay, we're, we're back in about 30 seconds. Um, and, uh, and, and then we'll just kind of like do a little, like, we'll say goodbye and I'll thank you for being on the show. And if there's any last thoughts that you want to say, please share them. And, um, you know, maybe when you get, you know, I'll have you, when you get the children's book going, I would love to like, you know, maybe have you come back or you just have you come back another time if you're willing to do it. And we're back with Hollywood Hempress Hour, and we are now at the 1 a.m. hour. And uh, our guest is needing to um, to go home, and I, I really want to uh, – well, she is home. <laughs> um, leave the show. Um, but uh, – and I, and I want to thank you uh, for coming in, Kimberly, and, and being on the show and um, sharing your story uh, and letting people know that they can, uh, they, there's alternative healing methods than for 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 what you've been diagnosed with than um, than uh, Western medicine. And uh, you know, I just I really wanted to get that information out there. Um, before you go, is there are there any last thoughts that you want to give out there to our listeners? Well, I, I want to thank uh, I want to thank you, Terry, for having me on your show. And I want everybody, especially. People that just found out they have MS, that there are alternative areas. Um, start with the diet, start with uh, nutrition, good exercise, and just, uh, you know, add prayer to your diet too, but just choose your own path because you are responsible for your own self. Don't rely on the government. I want to uh. thank everybody else for being on the panel tonight. and. And yeah, everybody have a happy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Good good night, Kimberly. Good night. Bye. 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 So that was uh, Kimberly Matlock. Uh, she is uh, an herbalist, and uh, also she just let us know in the break that she's going to be writing a couple of children children's books uh, as well. And we would definitely like to have her back and talk about that a little bit more, and, and return to Hollywood Hempress Hour on another night. Now we also have friends uh, with us, uh, and uh, also uh, we are in studio with North Flat Forest Green and Kevin Corn. And now we're going to like I think we're going to like rock and roll a little bit here. Uh, first, I want to like say welcome. Uh, to to the show, uh, Mr. Lizard, Lizard Prince. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so now we met you at the time you were in Australia. Yes. And uh, and, and you were listening to Hollywood Hempress Hour when I was on New Dissident Radio. Yes. Yeah, and then you you guys you contacted me and you said that you and your brother Tyler would love to be in the show and you guys called in. <laughs> Um, or we called you from, or, well, I guess you called us from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. So, wh wh what are the laws like there in Australia? I mean... Well, let's go with the abor. Let's go with the Aborigines. St like, like, because, like, at one of the breaks, you were talking about ab something about Aborigines. Yes, they... Not all of them are like that. Some of them are actually are can actually be quite nice. I had a few friends that were actually um, Aborigines, but at the same time, they like for instance, if one of them has like if one family member dies in their family and it's like a big high up member in in their family, they'll they'll throw riots. They'll they'll do everything. They it's it's actually pretty sad like how like how they react to it but the reason i said over the break that can, the actual police will actually tell you to run them over if you see them lined up in the middle of the streets and it's not because it's not for the fact that just to be violent towards them it's the fact that if you stop you're 
you will most likely die. They what they'll do is it's pretty wrong. They they they'll pull you out of your car, rape you, and kill you, pretty much. And it doesn't happen everywhere. It's not not all of Australia is like that. Mainly the mainly the like small towns outside the cities are the ones that are like that. It's 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 very rare occasion that it actually happens, but if it does, they just recommend that you stay home and do not leave your house. That's that's just really it's just plain common knowledge there. Wow. What? Let them over. Yeah, and if you also, I just wanted to ask you guys: Did you hear how Kimberly was saying earlier? She was saying um, paddock and all that stuff. What? what? She was saying what? Paddock. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that means. Um, see, that's that's that actually caught my that caught my ear actually. In Australia, it's actually just a field, like an open field, with, like for horses to run it. Uh huh. See, and the only reason I know that is because I used to live on a fifty-acre farm. We didn't have horses or anything, but we just owned all this land. And well, my stepbrother, he was kind of a moron, and well, he just always loved. To to get on the four le- four wheeler and tear up the yard. Well, he's every time he'd go out, he'd always say, "Well, I'm going to go tear up, um, tear up the paddock on the quad." And he was Australian, so it always sounded weird to me. But it kind of just it kind of just hit home for me that when she said that, I was just like, and then she said kiwis too. That's another thing. That's what um, that's what the Australians call um, New Zealanders. And so, like, she was just saying a lot of the lingo that I'd heard from Australia. Quite unusual. Oh, that sounds, uh, yeah. Well, it, it, it's kind of in, an interesting coincidence that you're from there, and then she she actually, like, mentioned something um, the same. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, so my one question to you, too, was was about how the laws are surrounding marijuana. Is it is it illegal there, or is there any... Is it, um, not any. Actually, they just they just recently made it legal to where you are allowed to have five plants in your household at a time to grow for your own recreational use. Oh, really? So, so it's not even. I mean, we're not even talking medicinal. We're just talking about actual legaliza- legalization. Yes, pretty much because they realize that the drugs there aren't aren't revolving aren't evolving around marijuana. Like around he, around. Around the United States, you can probably get like an ounce for like seven, uh, 375 to 400 depending on where you're going to, depending on where you're at in the United States. Well, in Australia, I've never seen anything uh, anything that's over 300. Heck, anything over 290. The most uh, That's the most it's ever been paid over there. It's a lot cheaper there because that's not what everybody's trying to buy. That's not what everybody's focused on. Everybody's focused on speed, crack, all that stuff. And well, the prime minister over there finally realized that and just said, "Well, screw it, let them smoke it. They're not doing any harm. They're just sitting at home. They're just sitting at home smoking weed. Um, it's not. It's not. A, she believes this. Well, he now believes that it's not a gateway drug. It's all, the only thing it's a gateway to is the fridge. That's what he believes. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> So, um, so, but you know, you can grow it, but let's say, let's say you grow it, you grow your five plants. Is it five plants? Yes. Okay. So you grow your five plants and, um, what if you, what if your friend hasn't grown any and your friend goes, Hey, can I give you 40 bucks for, um, you know, uh, an eighth of, out of your plants? Would that be illegal for you to sell your, your, your stash to him? Yes, that is illegal. It is illegal to re, uh, redistribute, but it isn't illegal to distribute seeds between, amongst each other. I found that out. Uh, it's a little loophole in the laws. So if you have a female plant and it's producing and it's producing seeds, that friend can get then give his friend seeds to grow his plants. Um, could you send it in the mail? Um, no, I'm. I'm not sure about that. All, all of this went legal shortly after I moved back here. Isn't and, that a bummer? <laughs> and, 
Yeah, oh yeah, you have no idea how I was feeling about that. <laughs> I was just very unlucky timing, I'm guessing. So is. I'm gonna live there for three years. Three years, cool. Yes. It's a very, 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 very long three years. Well, Melbourne? <laughs> huh? Melbourne or, or where? Um, I was about an hour out from Melbourne in a little town called Oracle. Oh, cool. Yeah, and that, I, now I live in Virginia, but that's oh, that's irrelevant. That's <laughs> a change. Yeah, well, that's, it's where I was born. Uh, so, so yeah, I've, had, I've had a pretty long history. <laughs> when you went to, why, why were you, why did you go to Australia? Uh, technically, I was a runaway from home at 16 years old. <laughs> and um, my mother, she had lived there for about three years already. And I was living with my father. Me and him... I'm not, I would, I'm not gonna talk bad about him. We, me and him had our differences. Me and, and me and my stepmom had major differences. So, she tried to call me out on a few things. And me, having an anger problem, not smoking weed at the time, kind of made me a little bit angry. And so, I packed the bag and left. And I never went back. I had no ran away from the top of West Virginia all the way into Virginia. And, well, the cops found me, and, well, there was a reason they didn't send me back up there, but I, my aunt came and picked me up. Well, four days later, my mother's there. She had jumped a plane and came and got me from Australia. So your brother Tyler was he already there, um, or did you guys go to go together? Um, no, Tyler was already there. Me and him, we were, we were separated. Uh huh. At, uh, I, I was eleven. He was fourteen or fi no, he was fifteen. And um, my mom and my dad got divorced and all this, and well, I went to live with him because well, my anger was too much of a problem for my mother to handle. <laughs> so. And then you started smoking weed, and then it helped you not be so angry. Well, kind of. I'm still quite an angry person, to be honest. But it it's only at times when I'm not at home to smoke it. <laughs> uh huh. Like I literally have to smoke every day, every two hours, or I would literally I start getting angry. I get really anxious. And immediately bad things will start to happen. I don't know why. Like, I've literally timed it down to almost every two hours. <coughs> like, I'll start getting anxious around that time. And I just have to smoke. It's just... I don't know. It's, and I'm trying to slow it down because of that. Because I'm realizing... Not many people can actually say this, but damn. Maybe I smoke too much. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, it so depends. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I wanted to, um, I wanted to get to that. Uh, let me pull that up here because I, I actually have it in the, um, in the trips line. Yeah, there were some uh, dispensaries that were raided in Colorado, and. Uh, I find it interesting because, you know, Colorado is, like, really the first state that, you know, had their votes come in and announce that they had they had legalized it. And, um, you know, uh, one of the, you know, the blogs that um, were was passed around through um, sent to me today was, why did the DEA just raid Colorado dispensaries and grow operations? Um, and, I'm, you know, if you want, I'll, I'll just read a little bit of it here. Um, it says that the uh, DEA levied a series of raids against medical marijuana facilities in both Denver and Boulder today, uh, smashing windows and confiscating cannabis along the way and offering zero explanation. 
while the DEA deemed the actions confidential and has not offered any reasoning behind the actions, the, I, uh, the IRS appears to be involved as well, which unfortunately means it could be a tax evasion situation, money laundering investigation, or another cleanse of sorts, all of which Ye justified. Uh, these individuals are very cool. Uh, very, these individuals very well could have been violating state law in some fashion and have done something egg, egg, um, I'm sorry, egg, egregious worthy of having your property trashed. If so, they got what they deserve. But we probably won't ever find out for a while, so it's worth playing the devil's lettuce advocate. Um, and then it goes on to say just about how uh, you know, uh, let me see. The, of course, since they're not telling us what these businesses did, we can only hope they were doing something that warranted these actions by the government. Uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigations, the Denver Police Department, and state local enforcement are today executing lawfully obtained search warrants and seizure warrants, said Jeff Dorschner, spokesman for the DOJ. Although we cannot at this time discuss the substance of this pending investigation, the operation underway today can comports with the department's recent guidance regarding marijuana enforcement matters, Dorsner said is in his emailed statement to the Denver Post. So they say it's an ongoing um, investigation. Well, it's totally, that's totally hilarious, though. Like, if you actually did the research behind it, and even on Google, you could find out what actually did happen. Like, there's nothing that they haven't said Okay, you know what? We do have to take a quick uh, commercial break. We're going to be right back uh, and continue the subject matter. Uh, stay tuned. How you How you doing? Uh, uh, how How you doing, James? Because <laughs> it's what it's almost. Yeah, buddy. It's four twenty in here, so yes, I'm going to. Part of Virginia. Um, up, upper part, like right near the border to West Virginia. Virginia. Like it's like this place is. It's a very small town. It can be very peaceful, but like any small town, it has its drama and so kind of. I've been through Virginia a few times. Oh, have you? Do you know where Roanoke is? Huh? I do know where Roanoke is. Yeah, I'm about I'm about 45 minutes out from Roanoke. I have a friend that I have a friend that lives in Roanoke. Oh, do you? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know when you because you invited me to uh, Tyler's wedding. How did that go? Oh, uh, um, believe it or not, me and Tyler really had our differences, and 
have, I am ashamed to admit it, but I didn't go to his wedding because me and his fiance had a, had a major falling out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it's, it's, it's actually more my fault because I under, I should, I, to be honest, should have understood the stress she was going through because there was a wedding coming up and I should have, and she, I, she was being pretty mean to people, but I should have understood the stress she was going through, and I do blame myself now. And we're all good. We're all good now. So okay, that's I'm good. Um, yeah, I have a friend. Um, you know, uh, Bernard Alvarez um, lives in Roanoke. The the guy from uh, the man who's a founder of the GIC. Uh, um, I think I know, I think I know who you're talking about. Actually, he he goes into. Um, Next time you talk to him, ask him and see if he goes to Happy's. Um, Happy's, any? It's called. It's a little shop called Happy's. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I know who, you, um, who you're talking about. I think I was talking to a guy about him the other day. <laughs> because I go to Roanoke all the time, and there's a shop called Happy's, and there's there's a shop I have a feeling he he'd probably go to. <laughs> so. He probably he probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. He has like really long long hair. Um, I've never actually met him in person. It's just um, I've heard about him because like I went in last time I went into this place there was um normal um handouts and stuff like that and there was a um a whole bunch of stuff about legalization and I was talking to him about it and then yeah um he brought up that name and. That shit, it just hit me in the head a little bit, but huh. we didn't talk. We didn't talk very long. We uh, I go there all the time. I go there all the time because uh, um, my girlfriend lives over there, so I have to go there quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much every weekend, maybe every other. <laughs> Yeah, I I've hung out in Virginia Beach quite a bit. Yeah, it's pretty. It's it's nice. It's just. No, it sucks. <laughs> like it's, it's. I hated every yeah. second of it. I've been there a bunch, and I don't like any of it. I have the only good it. the only good part about it is the party scene. Oh. The only good thing about it. Last long. Oh man, like I was there for like maybe like my first twenty minutes. I was there. I was in this little like bar slash club. Girl came up to me next thing you know, we're in a bathroom stall, we're doing some cocaine. Next thing you know, I'm walking out of the bathroom stall, and there's the police. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you know? I, I only did like three hours, and they let me go. But still, I had to call a taxi and then go back to my hotel, and that was just day one. What a shitty trip. Oh, yeah, that's how right. it started, dude. It continued. You have no idea. I had really bad experiences for <laughs> Jimmy. The only thing worse than... Alright, you guys, we're coming back to the show. Sorry. Uh, welcome back to Hollywood Hemptress Hour. Uh, with me is uh, North Blatt Forsgren and Kevin Korn, uh, both from Trips and Hardcore Entertainment. And also, uh, we have uh, the Lizard King uh, with us tonight. The Little Lizard King. Uh, the Little Lizard Prince um, is with us. Not the King, the Prince. I'm sorry. Um, and we were talking about uh, the dispensaries in, uh, in, in Colorado being raided uh, before the break. Uh... I just like to praise uh, all the dispensaries that didn't get raided today for following the state laws and regulations. You know, obviously, um, I don't think we should be blaming the feds, the state, the officials, the people who actually, for the first time, did their job correctly. Yeah, I agree. Okay, but they're still not. I mean, like, what what laws are they saying that this these people broke? Like, what what I mean, what are, what are some of the, what are some of the laws that they may have bro broken? Unclaimed income to, uh, tax evasion, um, distribution of products across state lines. Um, they were going and selling pot all over the place. And they yeah, were, they were running they were running pot to their own you know to their own uh, uh, facilities and whatnot across state lines, and I'm sure to other people as well. But I'm sure that's where it came in was it was they had multiple dispensaries. 
um, in two states. I mean, and, and, and by doing that, I mean, they, they're the bad guys we're talking about. What other state did they have a dispensary in? Well, we don't, we, I don't know if they had another one in another state. They okay. Saying, but the, the feds, they, are, they have already said, and this has already came out in their thing, that they were selling marijuana across state lines. Even okay, yeah, you can't do that. Okay. And they weren't claiming the income. They obviously had enough evidence already to legally, lawfully, if you read the report correctly, lawfully obtain. Warrants. That means in order to get the warrants to go do this, they already had pretty much enough info. You know what I'm saying? They just needed the, the actual numbers and the paperwork. So that's why they hit not only their 12 dispensaries, but their two houses as well. Yeah, they tend to do that. Um, you know, I, I know that when they raided people in uh, Los Angeles, um, you know, there's been some cases where they'll go and they'll they'll raid the person's home as well. Right, they raided their home. And but what I found really weird is all six people, a couple of them seem to have the same last name, so I assume it's a uh, family ram. Uh huh. You know? And um, they're all of like Latino descent. You know. <laughs> right. happen to be Mexican and you know is is the stereotype it's it's like it's like the uh, the, the blame the, I mean it's I'm not saying the stereotype I'm just saying like you know like if you go back to history you know when they called it marijuana they wanted to shame the Mexicans you know to get them out of the country and that that whole aspect of it you know I mean like whether they're Mexican or not really doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they were I mean a white person could be doing the same thing dispensaries they were in pet their laws were really in place in a very good great way it's one it's it's one of the best models that the entire country has and now this has happened and it's not it does not set a very good example it it, it kind of starts us off on the wrong foot it's a blemish but it's not a blemish i don't think it's a blemish on colorado so much i think that uh, i think for the the number of dispensaries that there are in colorado that uh, the fact that only one person, that, that one one corporation, I should say, or one entity, um, got busted. You know, I mean, it, it was it was a one it was a one entity that owned all of these all these dispensaries. Yeah, but it's coming on the heels of them. I mean, like at the same time, earlier this week. You know, there's there's another uh, notification. I posted this in trips too, as well. That um, the first recreational marijuana sales license was issued in Colorado. So you had this happening, um, you know, earlier in the week, and then you have this big bust happening, you know, a few a few days later. Well, maybe Obama's, maybe Obama's 
setting an example and saying, hey, don't fuck up. I think you know? it's perfect. Like, hey, they just gave them the first license to actually do it legally. Now they're cleaning house to all the people who haven't been following the rule. Here's my thing. These people obviously just didn't follow very basic, simple rules. They got greedy. They, demonizing, exactly. uh, they got greedy. We should be cheering all the other billion freaking dispensaries in Colorado who didn't get busted. Yeah, but how many people really think like that, Kevin? I mean, like, like, do you think, I mean, to me, I feel like, you know, you know how it is. There's, like, like there's, it, it, I'm comparing this to comedians, you know, like, like, there's, there's that one comedian that comes in and drinks all the booze at the bar when they gave it away for free, so they can only, then limit down to two weeks, and then they, and they fucked all of the wait staff, you know what I mean? They went, and then so that, when you come in, when you get there, you have, you barely get to have any of the perks that the person in front of you had, because you, they've already smashed everything out of the way it's tainted it now you know i i feel like there's a pot especially when you have people that are still like we're progressive thinkers okay we we we're we're already not what i feel like this the the the, the normal opinion but how many people are now i mean they're just so quick to say oh yeah well they're all criminals you know, they were all the criminals in the first place, and now look what they've done. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that that attitude still is going to permeate with some people and in their opinions of everything. I have, I have yet to see that media report. In fact, all the media reports, every single one that I have found, except for the actual report of what happened, I'm not talking about just the media. I'm just talking about the overall, like, leftover opinion. Do you really think that everyone's going, oh, well, the other ones are really great. I'm not sure. I think the people that I know are going to feel that way because I'm connected to those people. But if you look out of that paradigm, a lot of people don't even understand what that is. Well, yeah, I know a lot of people are watching going, oh, here it starts. This is, this is how it starts. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. This is the big political viewpoint. This is, this is where it all begins. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it is, but I think that I have yet to see one media report where they were against the dispensary. I haven't, I haven't seen a single report of it yet. Even the report you posted, the guy's like, no, they, the cops are bad. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Everything, the Denver Post pretty much re, replayed his, his report word for word. The Denver Post played it off as it wasn't the dispensary. It was this. Every report I read was in favor of the dispensary that got busted. Well, maybe because it's been so obvious that they've actually terrorized the dispensaries when they were actually really, you know, like following state guidelines, or and, and now, like now, maybe somebody actually really is guilty, no, all and so. Pretty much say that they they know that these people were dirty and that they're not a bit, they won't make they won't even comment on anything that these people their lawyers won't let them talk, you know. They know that they pretty they're pretty much dirty. But what's funny is is that they're even though they know they're dirty, they're not they're not reporting that. They're not giving that they the story sounds much better that the cops did. <laughs> you know? The you know, it's really I think it's a really weird media story on you know, like pretty much blaming the cops and the feds for this when basically they were perfectly in line. See, I'm I, I'm going to say I I'm one of those people that's a little a little bit skeptical. I need to know I need to know what it is exactly that they're busting them for. I you know just because they say well we've got proof or we've got whatever for me I do feel well show me show me what that is because I be, be, you know because because I because I have seen I've seen the bullshit happen. I've seen them lie. I've seen I've seen accusations. I've witnessed it. So I have I I have a hard time going yeah well these people were wrong blah 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 blah. I mean, you know, the, as far as I'm concerned, unless they can actually like, you know, if they uh, itemize what it is that they're going after and what really happened, I still think I, I my personal opinion is well let's see. That's right. I mean, okay, okay. Well, uh, hold on. You gotta also consider this. Yes, well, only one dispensary was hit, but also you gotta think: why would they only hit that one unless they had more proof than what they're telling the rest? Uh, unless they had more proof of what they were doing 
than what than what they're telling people. And sometimes they can't tell everybody, like the public, everything because they have their files that they need to keep under lockdown. I still need to know. I still, I still need to know. I need, I need to know. I mean, I, like, I'm still like, it doesn't matter, like, how how it was done or it was one chain of people. I've seen one chain of people get hit before in uh, in, in in Los Angeles, you know, like the Kushmarts or, you know, or whatever. I mean, it like they like. When they go to court, you will know exactly why it all happened. But by that point, it'll be public record. Right. Now, My personal opinion is, is that I need to wait and find out what what their bus, what, what's actually really going on. I don't really want to just assume that because of the fact that it it looks in like it like yeah, granted, it looks like they they may have been doing something wrong. I'm not saying they're innocent either, but I feel uh, this this is how I feel. I'm gonna have to wait and find out first because I've seen them be manipulated most of the time, most of the time. I have seen them like not like be be not, I've seen them the feds invading the state's rights or what was actually really implemented more than the person being criminal. So I'm coming from a different place. I'm coming from a different personal experience. I've seen it first I've experienced it firsthand. So it's hard for me to just go, "Oh yeah, I'm sure they were guilty based on blank, 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 drawing these conclusions because they're, they, they've they always led those conclusions out to whatever reason that they do to do things. So I, I, I have to see, I have to know before I can like say, well, yeah, they were, they were guilty based on the fact that they, they're saying they have this evidence or they might have, they're saying they might have this evidence. And I can understand why they're saying that they might have it. But, you know, I've also experienced how the IRS will stranglehold, uh, you know. The about evidence or might, they said that they broke four of these laws. And they proved pretty much every single one of them. Yeah. They did that in the court. Yeah, but they don't, but they're not saying what there is, what they are yet. And they really haven't stood trial for it yet. That's, I, you know, you, can, you have your opinion, Kevin, and I have mine. You have your, I mean, you have your opinion about it and the way you want to view it. And I have the way that I want to view it. And I don't see it the same way. I don't see it the same way. And what the state representatives said they were being said the state laws they broke on. I could pull that up. I have that. Well, that's, that's fine. I'm sure you can. But even if you pulled it up, it's still not going to change my opinion about it. Right, but you're saying you need to know what they're being charged with. They're I need to know more information. I need to see them go to trial before I assume something totally. Yes, that's just the way I am about this. Because you gotta also, dude, you got to also understand that since there are eight of them. Would you do that with George Zimmerman shooting Trayvon Martin? I don't think you can compare that to this. Well, I mean, it's, it's just like going to court, though. You're saying, like, you, 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 you know, here's what, he's being, here's what they're being charged with. You know what they're being charged with. But you're like, I need to see them go to trial before I make Yeah, but, you know, you're dealing with, um, with the feds, like, being nasty about this on all different levels. And most of the time, they've lied. Kevin, I mean, they, they've lied a lot. That's why people are having a tr trouble believing it. Yes, I need to see more things. And yes, there's some people too that would be out there that would wonder about anybody's trial. You know, every people are like, you know, uh, innocent until they're proven guilty. You know, I mean, you can't just like, just, I mean, for me, it's just not enough. Anyways, we got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. What? I said good shit. Good radio. <laughs> uh, I, I, I need a phone. I got three or four people that are listening right now that I'm going to talk 
talking to on uh, Facebook, and, and they're loving it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, me too. I got so many people messaging me too. <laughs> They said, finally, it's, it's finally picking up. People like that second hour, Terry. Yeah, yeah. I should probably, like, start it off more in the first hour. You know?
To Hollywood Hempress Hour. Uh, that was uh, Robbie Jeanette. Uh, and she's in love with my penis um, from his band Rudy. Which you, if you like that song, you can find it on iTunes. And uh, Robbie Jeanette uh, actually uh, wrote the theme song for uh, Hollywood Hempress Hour and all the little musical bumpers that you hear uh, between it. So, um, yeah, she's in love with my penis. So, uh, welcome back to the show. I'm with uh, the Lizard Prince uh, and North Flat Force Grin and Kevin Korn. Uh, we had a, a very heated discussion about um, the raids in Colorado and then also... Um, uh, but we, I am excited about the fact that, that um, they applied for their, I guess it was their business licenses to actually sell it recreationally. I guess it starts in January. What? Like, like they're, I mean, their authorization to sell it, um, you know, uh, recreationally. to, to yeah, six weeks, so I think that's about January. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think they, they had to apply in October. Well, I mean, it's, anyway, it's, it's, supposedly it's supposed to be around January that it actually begins. So I thought I read. Six, 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 uh, from what I read, it was six, it's, six weeks, it's six weeks from today. So whatever six weeks from today is, that's probably like your first or second week in January. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, because like what, we're like, you know, we're the... Almost done with November to December. Like the first like, week, of, after the first week of January? Yeah, about the first week of January, yeah. Yeah, yeah, next year. It'll be, be interesting. <clears throat> yeah. So, not, not to change the subject or anything, but I was standing outside tonight and smoking a joint and looking up at the sky, and uh, right about dusk, um, right about dusk, I noticed uh, the, this huge, you know, like, uh, you know, star in the sky. Uh, like at first, I thought it was a plane and sat there and looked at it for a while and realized that I was looking at that fucking comet. I saw it. Really? That thing is fucking huge. Yep. It is fucking huge. And it's only going to get bigger. This fucker's supposed to be the size of the moon by the time it's as big as it's going to get. You know, I'm, I'm, I know I've been kind of out of the loop with the, with the comet. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's ginormous. Check it out tomorrow night. I mean, fuck, look south. Look south uh, right about dusk. Okay. And it's it, you can't fucking miss it. it it's it's brilliant. It, it it doesn't look like a comet because we're looking straight head on at it. It's going by the sun. It, it, it's getting closer and closer to the sun right now, so it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Is it is it going to be coming close? I mean, like, is it how close is it going to get to us? Very. Really. Yeah. Is, I mean, because I've heard some people, like, I mean, I've heard some stuff like, oh, it might hit us, or we might have some tragedy. Oh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk of Nabooru and fucking, you know, all kinds of different stuff with this one. This one's going to be big. This is, a, this is a big thing. Like, I mean, something that big, if, it, if it's going to dwarf the moon, I mean, it's got to have its own gravitational pull, wouldn't you think? Well, yeah. Yeah, it should. You know, and if it can't get that fucking close, it's got to have some kind of effect on fucking, on, on our, our gravitational pull. Uh-huh. Or at least the moons. Well, I found some really interesting stuff on this right here. I, I'm on the Planetary Society webpage. Uh-huh. And, um, they have some interesting stuff to say about this. Okay, what is it? Well, they say this came out, uh, two days ago. But they said two days ago that we have uh, still two weeks. We are less than 
two weeks away from the comet known as C slash two zero one two S one, also known as Ison, reaching what they call perihelion. I don't even know what that means. And if we're honest, we are still none the wiser as to how the situation might play out. So even like these NASA scientists don't really know what's going on. They have outcomes in the coming days. Okay, so so what's the worst outcome? Because their imminent dis disintegration, disintegration at for helium or survival. And then they wrote, but since we wrote that, Ison has undergone a dramatic shift in nature with a brightness increase of at least an order or two of magnitude and soaring range of dust and gas being released from its nucleus. In this new development, we can make, now say with uh, absolute certainty that the comet Ison will definitely do one of those things <laughs> they said it might do. Okay, that was bad. It's really weird. They basically think that this is really bad news. <laughs> um, they say, yeah, it's a near-sun comet. Yeah, so it's uh, going to get brighter and brighter the closer to the sun it gets. The nucleus inside the comet remains intact. Um, okay, because... Um, Actually, um, uh, Sasha just put something in the chat. It, it says, astronomers call it the monster. It's the biggest and brightest comic, cosmic explosion ever witnessed. Had it been closer, Earth would have been toast. Uh, orbiting tele this burst was a once-in-a-century cosmic event. NASA astrophysicist Chief Paul Hertz said at news conference Thursday, but because this blast was 3.7 billion light years away, mankind was spared. In fact, no one on Earth could even see it with the naked eye. Right, except we had fallen meteorites just yesterday. Yeah, we're just, just in Clackamas here. <laughs> and we have this giant thing that, that's called ISON flying right at us. I call it the monster, Priest said. In fact, one of the other studies not written by Priest used the word monster in its title, Unusual Language for Scientific Report. Study Stonehenge has been searching for clues in the wrong place for 90 years. Well, oh my God, where did that come from? That came from the website? <laughs> that was freaking me out. You know what's really weird is not, not nowhere in this Yahoo News does it talk about ISON. Uh huh. The actual. One of the pieces from this explosion is coming to it's the it's chunk is coming right at us. Well, that's the thing though. I don't think that it is Ison. Ison's pretty far away. It's at the sun. It, I mean, it's on the other side of the sun, coming at us from that direction. So, I mean, I don't think that we're gonna get an offset of anything from the comet until until much closer. Oh yeah, you know, it says we, about a good two weeks. Huh? It says it's about a, it's about a good two weeks out. Yeah. According to the science site I'm on, uh -huh. I thought it's about a good two weeks out. And they have kind of, you know, all these different, like, there's three different ways it could play out. Obviously, the third one is, like, the one where it's most, like, reliable. Um, where it kind of talks about, uh, you know, it reaching what they call perihelion and it, like, pretty much takes care of itself, but they're, they're, they're honoring it with NASA, SDO, Stereo Satellites, ESA, NASA, SOHO Satellites, um, and they, they claim that the, you can watch it right here, like, they have, like, pictures of it, which is really weird, but, I don't know, like, the whole thing is, like, there's, like, oh, this all could happen, this could happen, but it looks like it's all just, like, kind of, like, this could happen, but then it kind of tells you what could happen, and it basically is nothing, but it's what a sight to see. Well, we did, we did run out of time. I say, you know, let's just keep smoking weed. <laughs> and, um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It, it, hopefully it's not, it's not the end of mankind in any way or that we're not going to have any type of, like, damage or mar martial uh, you know, law. But until then, smoke weed, be happy, and, um, and uh, you know, 
peace. I want to thank uh, the Lizard Prince for being here today, and uh, you know, and, and um, would love to have you come back another time. And uh, also Kevin Corn for being here and co-hosting with me, and also North Flat Force Grin. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing trips after hours on the Freedom of Joyce Network, probably in about a half an hour. Good night. Oh, thanks, Sasha. Yeah, the 12 cool facts is cool. That's what I'm talking about.